Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am back to do a video about my 2018 favourites. Now, as you will know, I've been doing a little series on my channel where I go through the past few years that I wasn't on booktube, going from 2014 all the way up to 2019, and talking about my favourite books from each year, because yes, I am that sad. I did keep records of my favourite books for that long before I ended up actually getting onto booktube myself. It's something that had always been in I don't even want to say the back of my mind, it was always in the forefront of my mind is one day I want to have a booktube channel and therefore I need to like actually have prepared videos for it. So I would write lists like this about my favourite books of each year, but then come the end of the year I'd never film them, I'd never start making videos, it's very sad really. But useful for me right now because I'm doing a little project where I want to go back and reread my old favourites ahead of a video that I want to do eventually which is going through my all-time favourite books. And yes, yeah, so each video in this series is going back over a previous year, going through those old favourite books of the year and working out is this still a favourite? Is this a possible contender for that all-time favourites video? And yes, we've done 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017 and now we are on to the penultimate year 2018. 2018 is actually quite a special year in my reading because it was the first year, at least since I started recording my reading, that I actually read over 100 books. In this year I read 105 books, which I'm still amazed by, even though I have in all subsequent years read 100 books since. It just seems like such a massive jump from about, I want to say about 57 I read in 2017. And I think I can attribute this to 2018 just being a really good year for me, I felt really motivated. And it was the first time post-university, or at least post my undergrad, that I actually felt like there was a direction that I was going. So at the top of 2018 I I had decided that I was going to apply for a master's that would start in the following September. And so the first eight months or so of 2018 was me really prepping to do my history course. I was originally going to do early modern history and then once I actually went to my open day I decided no, what I want to do is public history. Very good decision on my part I think. And so alongside working part-time, alongside still applying for publishing roles, I was just reading a lot, both reading a lot of history related things but also just generally reading, reading anything. I also went on a bit of a classics kick at the beginning of 2018 which I really enjoyed. Kind of trying to go back over all of those classics that I've always been meaning to read but just hadn't yet and supplementing it also with some popular fiction and non-fiction that I was hearing about. And yeah, I just feel like 2018 was a very good year for reading for me. Editing Charlotte here because I have remembered that 2018 was also the year that my niece was born and while I'm not saying that anything that I'm saying about like being very motivated and reading all sorts of different books isn't true as to why my Goodreads numbers are at 105 books in 2018, but also I have looked back at my Goodreads and it seems like like at least 10 of the books that I've got on there are baby books that I was reading with my niece because I was very very keen. I have been since she was born at that you know Auntie Charlotte buys books and Auntie Charlotte reads books with little one. Um, <laughs> but also I just find it very funny that the year that I end up reading over 100 books like a good 10% of that is baby books that I am able to read within two minutes. <laughs> Nice way to pad out your numbers there, Charlotte. <laughs> in previous iterations of this video, I have gone through the books in order of preference, going from my least favourite to most favourite. The way that my original list was arranged was actually just by date. I don't know if there was an all-time favourite from this year, so I'm just going to go along with the list. Interestingly enough, the first book that pops up on this list is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This was a massively popular book in 2018. I was hearing people talking about it everywhere, and I remember I particularly picked this up because Rosiana at Rosiana House Rojas had mentioned it and recommended it. I remember it being this slower paced, very character focused story about how this family who live in a suburb really get shaken up by the arrival of this mother and her daughter. However, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't remember a whole lot about the plot aside from that. I know that there was recently a TV series, I think it had Reese Witherspoon in it, so maybe I need to give that a watch to kind of refresh my memory. But yes, I have to say, if I'm not remembering much of the plot, I don't think it can be a favourite book for me. A book that I definitely remember the plot of and would definitely make it onto my all-time favourites list, or at least this is pending following a reread, is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. As I say, I was really wanting to go back through all of the classic books that I'd never read before. And I picked up Frankenstein kind of a little bit reluctant, I'm not gonna lie. I'd heard great things about it, but the main thing that I'd always heard was that this was really like the invention of sci-fi, and I'm not much of a sci-fi reader. It really put me off. So I was amazed to actually read this and be sucked in by this writing, by like the philosophical musings of this book. The chapters that just left me breathless in this were actually the chapters when the monster, or the creature, is recounting to Frankenstein what he has done since he ran away, how he learned how to read, and really how to think, how he was observing this family from a distance, 
friends. But when he revealed himself, he was shunned. And it was just absolutely devastating and heartbreaking. And I just never knew that Frankenstein had so much depth. So yes, as I say, this is certainly going to be a contender for a, a favourite book. The next book is The Beaumont by Hannah Gregg, Fashionable Society in Jordan, London. If you're a fan of Bridgerton and you've been wanting to learn a little bit more about Georgian society, then this is definitely a book to pick up. Definitely on the more academic side, but I love this history. I think it's so, so interesting. Just looking at this elite society in the 18th century. I think it actually recently had a paperback release, but this maybe wouldn't make it onto an all-time favourites list, but definitely like a favourite of history books for me. Book number four is also non-fiction and it is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edda Lodge. I feel like this book really had a moment in 2018, 2019, and then I, I rarely heard people talk about it since 2020, I want to say. I wonder how much of that is because the conversation has moved on so much from the things that Rennie Edda Lodge was talking about. And unfortunately, not necessarily in a positive way when we're talking about racism. But I remember absolutely loving this book and it really just offered a lot of different perspectives and a lot of history, particularly to do with British attitudes to race that I just had never considered before. And I just remember being really, really gripped by it. I also remember that I read this when I was in London. I was just about to go to an interview at a publishing house. Oh no, I just come back from the interview at the publishing house and I ran into Bella Italia because my mum had given me vouchers as a treat, as a post-interview treat. And as I always do when I go to a restaurant on my own, I always whip out a book whilst I'm waiting for my order to come through. And the girl who was sat next to me, who was also eating on her own, just tapped me on the shoulder and she was like, I'm reading that too. And we just had a really nice short conversation about the book and what we were learning from it. I feel like increasingly I'm getting worse and worse at actually picking books up, particularly non-fiction books, when the buzz about it is really high. But actually thinking about this book makes me want to be a little bit more diligent with my non-fiction reading and try and actually be engaged in those conversations more often. Book number five is The Tenant of Warfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I adore this book, though it is definitely due a reread. I haven't read this since 2018. This for me is probably my second favourite of the Brontes. I think Jane Eyre definitely still is number one, but I do definitely feel like Anne Bronte is very underrated as far as the three Bronte sisters go. And I just think it's so sharp and incisive and feminist in a way that I just didn't really expect. I remember I actually watched the movie that came out a few years ago, which features Celise Baratheon, the actress who plays her, and I found that just a bit jarring to start off with. But honestly, period drama adapters remake The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. This is in dire need of an updated adaptation, please. The next book is This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. Once again, another very hyped book. I cannot believe how on the pulse I was. Adam Kay's medical memoirs, which are so incredibly funny. And I think had a bit for a new detention last year because the TV show came out. I love these. I think they're really like heartbreaking in one sense and then hysterical in another. Just how hard it is to be a junior doctor. I think I was especially fascinated by this because he worked as an OBGYN. And I don't know, I just find pregnancy and childbirth really, really fascinating. So getting to know what it was like to be a junior doctor on those wards was just really interesting. Though if you are a bit squeamish, then I'd steer clear. <laughs> Definitely one of my favourite memoirs of all time. Book number seven is This Is Going To Hurt by Mina Kandasami. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my brain at this point because that book is clearly when I hit you. What are you doing, Charlotte? And I have mentioned this every now and then on my channel and usually I mention this in conjunction to the Women's Prize for Fiction and how I think that this book was truly robbed. I know everybody loved Home Fire. I wasn't really fussed on Home Fire. I wanted this to win. But it's just this haunting portrayal of domestic violence, which actually got me really emotional and really angry whilst I was reading it, but like in a good way. And I have said since reading this that this could be on my best books of all time list, but I do need to reread it. It has been six years, but I found it so unsettling. The conversations around creating a narrative, taking back your own narrative, and who controls the narrative especially. Really, really engaging, really interesting. But yes, definitely do a reread of this one but I think this could be a real contender. Book number eight is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rhea. Having loved The Secret History and heard a lot of buzz about this and how very similar it was, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I definitely feel out of the two that The Secret History is probably the better written book. However, I do disagree with people who say that it is just copying. I think it is definitely like a tribute to The Secret History, but just taking these characters, these very intense students, and taking their passion from being classics to Shakespeare. And I mean, just doing that, I was always going to like it because I love reading about these very intense students who are passionate about a topic and I love Shakespeare. I remember watching a booktube video about If We Were Villains and I can't remember who it was but they said it was so unrealistic that these characters kept on like throwing quotes at each other, different Shakespeare quotes, and it made me think of the fact that when me and my friends were studying King Lear we would be sat in our sixth form common room and we would just throw quotes back and forth because we were such nerds. And yeah it brought me back to being a student but you know like minus the murder. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would end up reading this in my best books project. I feel like a lot of the things I love about it do definitely go back to the secret history, but I've never read them back to back, so I don't know. 
I found it a really engaging story. I really wanted to know what happened next. If you're a big fan of The Secret History, then I wouldn't let the comparisons like hold you back from reading this. I just think if anything, it adds more fun to the story. Next up is another memoir and that is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. Maggie O'Farrell talking about her 19. I think it is brushes with death because apparently I am a morbid soul at heart and when I heard about this as a concept I was like yes gotta read that. Another memoir that I remember absolutely loving and finding it very very poignant at the time and there are certain stories in the different brushes of death particularly her first encounter where she's on holiday she's gone out walking and she comes across a man who seems a bit dodgy. She has like a short interaction with him and then kind of just speeds on home and then the next day she finds out that later that night he had actually killed another girl who was out walking on her own and just having that stomach dropping moment of oh my god that could have been me. That is the brush of death that like stays with me the most. To be honest I'm having a harder time at remembering some of the others which is such a shame because I remember really enjoying this one and I wonder how much my memory being blank about this book is because this was one of the books that I was reading when we were moving house. 2018 was the year that we moved out of what had been my home for the entirety of my life and so we had a good month there where everything was very up in the air. My brain being one of those things that was very much up in the air. Anytime that I wasn't thinking about home I was thinking about the fact that in a month from now I'm going to be packing up to go to university. So I feel kind of bad for this book because I did enjoy it at the time but probably my brain space just pushed the book out in favour of other things. Book number 10 on this list is Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I kind of picked this up on a whim. I'd heard a lot of people saying how brilliant it was but to be honest with you I'd only ever read one Neil Gaiman book, The Ocean at the End of the Lane, and I didn't like it very much. I didn't know anything, anything at all about Norse mythology to be honest, but I heard people say it was really really funny so I gave it a go and I was so so charmed by this. Neil Gaiman just tells the stories of the Norse gods in just such a funny way and I, I wonder how much of it is because the stories themselves are already quite funny, but he just made all of these characters so incredibly lovable, even those who are a little bit more tricky and devious, low-key, and it just really brought up this mythology to life in a way that it just never had been for me. So maybe not a favourite book of all time but one that I'm definitely grateful to and I'm holding on to my copy. And then the last note that I have on my 2018 favourites is Sally Rooney books. Not really a book in particular and to be honest with you I wouldn't say that the two Sally Rooney books that I read this year which were Conversations with Friends and Normal People, I wouldn't say that they were favourite books but I remember thinking that reading Sally Rooney this year actually opened my eyes to something about my reading taste which is the fact that as I've said many times since making my channel I am very much a character focused reader. While Sally Rooney's books did not 100% hit the mark for me they were mostly four star books. I realised that I was enjoying an aspect of them and the aspect of them was these conversations between characters. That I wasn't minding how plotty a book was, how beautifully written a book was, but what it needed to have was good strong characters and their relationships had to be very well defined and very clear to me. And so yeah I think I think with this list I wanted to tip my hat to Sally Rooney for making me realise this, even though truth be told they would never make it onto a favourite books of all time list for me. I'm sorry Sally Rooney fans, but I'm very grateful to her for the realisation so there we go, that's a quick whistle stop tour through my 2018 favourite books. I can't believe we're coming to the end of this little series of throwback favourite videos. Next time it will be 2019, which is the very last one, because if you wanted to see my 2020, 2021 and 2022 favourites, well, they're already on my channel. Do let me know if you've read any of the books that I've spoken about today. Alternatively, please rack your memories and let me know which 2018 books were your favourites. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.